Russia's invasion of Ukraine has brought death, devastation and unspeakable suffering. We all remember the horrors of Butcher. It is estimated that more than 20,000 civilians and more than 100,000 Ukrainian military officers have been killed so far. Russia must pay for its horrific crimes, including for its crime of aggression against a sovereign state. And this is why, while continuing to support the International Criminal Court, we are proposing to set up a specialized court backed by the United Nations to investigate and prosecute Russia's crime of aggression. We are ready to start working with the international community to get the broadest international support possible for this specialized court. Russia must also pay financially for the devastation that it caused. The damage suffered by Ukraine is estimated at 600 billion euros. Russia and its oligarchs have to compensate Ukraine for the damage and cover the costs for rebuilding the country. And we have the means to make Russia pay. We have blocked 300 billion euros of the Russian Central Bank reserves, and we have frozen 19 billion euros of Russian oligarchs' money. In the short term, we could create with our partners a structure to manage these funds and invest them. We would then use the proceeds for Ukraine. And once the sanctions are lifted, these funds should be used so that Russia pays full compensation for the damages caused to Ukraine. We will work on an international agreement with our partners to make this possible. And together we can find legal ways to get to it. Russia's horrific crimes will not go unpunished. So the unelected president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, vote to set up a specialized court to prosecute alleged war crimes committed by Russians in Ukraine. Von der Leyen didn't mention the setup that the tribunal could take, but I believe if the US and the EU are serious about it, it can't be through a UN Security Council resolution because Russia will definitely veto it. Therefore, the possible option is a hybrid tribunal where the substantive laws are based on Ukraine's legal system, similar to the Special Tribunal for Lebanon, which investigated the assassination of the former Prime Minister of Lebanon, Rafael Hariri, in 2005. The Hariri Tribunal, however, has set up a precedence of holding trials in abstainia, so it would be interesting to see if the Tribunal for Ukraine will adopt the same format. The Hariri Tribunal also taught us that although it is expected from such tribunals to be neutral, outside meddling and an incredible amount of politicization were self-evident, especially between 2005 and 2006 when the German prosecutor Detlef Melis was the head of the UN International Independent Investigation Commission and he issued premature reports implicating Syrian and Lebanese intelligence agencies in the assassination and as a result, Several Lebanese senior generals were arrested and sent to prison for four years without evidence, although all four generals were released later for the lack of evidence. In recognition of his role, Melis has been decorated with the German Bundesverdienstkreuz Erste Klasse or the Order of Merit First Class. And in 2009, Melis was appointed by the EU Commission to head the European Union Philippines Support Program. I think you are smart enough to connect the dots here and understand how these legal matters work and the impossibility of complete impartiality in this sort of legal and justice system. Now let's go back to von der Leyen who said she will work with the international community to get the support needed for this court. And we all know what does international community means nowadays or what Western political elites think it is. More importantly, von der Leyen said the $300 billion frozen reserves of the Russian Central Bank will be used in the reconstruction of Ukraine, which is an illegal move because these assets belong to the Russian people who may agree or disagree with their government's actions in Ukraine. 
However, this Western policy is neither surprising nor unprecedented, as the US and the EU have a track record of freezing foreign assets and sometimes stealing them, such as the cases of Afghanistan and Venezuela. Nevertheless, in the case of Russia, I believe it is easier said than done, as Switzerland is reluctant in walking this path and stealing Russian assets because there is no legal structure that would allow seized frozen Russian assets to be sent to Ukraine. And Russia is not Afghanistan or Venezuela as Moscow is capable of inflicting heavy military and economic pain to its opponents. Another interesting revelation by von der Leyen is the 100,000 Ukrainian officers killed since Russia's offensive on Ukraine in February 2022. Unsurprisingly though, von der Leyen deleted her full video from Twitter and uploaded an edited one after cutting this part from the video. It is speculated that both the US and Ukraine were mad at von der Leyen for revealing the death toll of Ukraine because it is classified information according to the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense. But imagine how big the death toll is among the armed forces of Ukraine. 100,000 soldiers are sent to their death, 100,000 families are grieving, 100,000 kids may grow up without fathers. If 100,000 dead bodies couldn't convince the Ukraine will win mob that diplomacy is in favor of Ukraine, I don't know what else can do because as far as I'm concerned, the United States and the EU do not give a dime about the Ukrainians and Russia's strategy is to drain the human capacity of Ukraine.